Hello, and welcome to Drawing with Paolo. As you can see, it's raining today, but it's the best time to do some drawing. Let's go inside and draw something cool. Well, because it's raining today, I feel we should draw an animal that likes to play in the water. So, hmm, a fish? That's kind of boring. Maybe uh, a duck. Let's draw a duck. All right, so ducks are made of pretty basic shapes. Um, let's get to it, and we'll see what we can do. Let's start with a basic circle up here, which will represent the duck's head. And of course, with a little bit of an S-curve here, we are going to create the duck's neck. It needs to flow right into the body here, so oh, back up to do its back, and then back down to the bottom to do his tail feathers. And it kind of looks like a sideways flame. If you've ever drawn flames before, like, you know, the top of a candle, that's what your duck body should kind of look like. And of course, the duck's bill, which is sort of easy to draw. And then it's attached to the head here with these kind of spike-like shapes. Here you go, coming all the way to the eyeball now, which looks like, um, you know, apple seeds. Nice and black in there. And now with my fancy dandy eraser, I'm going to erase the lines I don't require anymore. Get rid of those. This one here too, unrequired. Bzz, bzz, bzz. This one too, I'm going to keep the thicker line. Look at that, our duck is almost done. Eh, not quite, but you get the idea. And of course, feathers from this distance kind of look like hair. So. It looks like the duck will be hairy, but essentially you can imagine their feathers. If you've seen previous videos of mine, you know that we've drawn a wolf, a bear, a dog, and all of these animals have the same kind of shape for the hair. And so a duck here will kind of look like he's got hair, but it'll look like feathers when we get down to his tail feathers and, and wing. I'm going to put his nostril here, which will look, kind of look like a repetitive part of his eye, or, you know, it's like a, an echo of his eye. And a little bit of detail here, his mouth goes right there, just like that. And then we'll put in a cheek line, right here, this, this guy's been, he's healthy, he's been eating well, so we'll give him a bit of a, a cheek, cheek and chin. All right, this line goes all the way back down into the body. And then we'll give him a little bit of a detail element here at the front, which is, of course, where his wing comes to attach itself. Get that out of the way. Make these lines a little bit darker. And then, of course, we're going to give a little bit of shading effect here to the cheek. So he's got a little bit of a puffy cheek, a little bit of a puffy cheek here, and, and we'll put in some shading. We're going to add a little bit of a sparkle to his eye as well. So I need to erase a portion of that and recolor it in while keeping a little bit of white in there. Just like that. And then we're going to color in more detail here, so a little bit a little bit of shading. You can imagine that the light is coming from the top left. I do that a lot, actually. The light is always coming from the top left. <laughs> I guess it's because it's easier for me to color on that side of each one of my characters. But we're going to color in the beak. Nearly fully colored in, the same tint or hue. A nice light gray and then a bit of darker shading here to the beak top area. And I like to think that watching somebody draw is like watching a fire burn in a fireplace or at a campfire. You can sit down and watch a fire burn for a long time. It's a lot of fun to watch. As I color the right side of the duck's neck here all the way down to his body, I remember watching Bob Ross. Bob Ross was a an American painter, painted with oil paints. I had this amazing orangey-brown afro and beard and he would have the softest voice and would show us how to paint and I could watch him for hours. And so I hope my drawing videos give you the same kind of effect. So we're going to add some detail here that kind of look like feathers. 
not too much detail, just putting in some, putting down some stuff, you know, a little bit of detail here and there. And we're going to color this part in. The light source cannot reach this section, so it's a lot, it's darker in there. Just like that. And then we're going to retrace this line to make it darker. I'm satisfied with the outline of the beak, so I'm going to make it nice and dark. There we go, fill in that mouthpiece there. Yeah, our duck is coming along rather well. We'll give it a bit more shading here at the top of the head, and we're going to color in the cheek as well. And remember, the cheek is kind of like a sphere, and we've seen the sphere a bunch of times now, and so you can treat this cheek area like how you would color a sphere. And we're going to attach here a bit of shading to the neck portion, and down here we're going to raise his back a little bit, I find them a little thin, so we're going to put some feathery shapes in here. And then, of course, his uh, back feathers. And so if you've drawn flame before, I think that this duck has a lot of flame shapes. And it's a quick way to design feathers. Just like that. Two little squiggly lines and looks like feathers from afar. Okay, what's next? So let's add a little bit more uh, detail here to his back and working our way down. So this is where the body curves into his uh, wing and so we need to make it darker there. Well, I think I'll make this portion down here which will be his uh, back feathers, his tail feathers. Should pop out like this. I miss Bob Ross. It'd be, he's on TV still. You know, you can catch him on PBS once in a while, but it was fun to be able to watch him weekly. I get him once in a while. That's Bob Ross. Check him out online. It's very cool if you want to learn how to oil paint. Maybe he's on YouTube. I've never actually looked. But he passed away a bunch of years ago. Okay, so we're going to draw now this background. where Our duck is pretty much completed, um, and so... It's sort of boring to just leave a duck there living in nothing, in white space. I don't think ducks like snowstorms, so we're going to actually fill in that white, snowy space with background. So we're going to put in some grass here, and maybe a couple of stones like this, and some flat stones in there, some rocks. And then we're going to continue the grass all the way behind our duck here. And so this is a grassy area, but the duck isn't walking around in the grass. He's going to be floating on water. So this is the water line all the way across. And then, of course, what's floating on top of the water are the lily pads. Lily, lily, lily pads. And these are just ovals, right? They're very simple to draw. Ovals. Another one over here. They can, uh, I guess they kind of look like egg shapes. But what will make them different than an egg, of course, is the little split we put down here where the leaves grow from it. And then the middle line splits that in half. And then these little uh, sun rays that come from the middle all the way out and radiate away from the leaf. And the edges are curved. And that's how you know this is a leaf and, and not uh, an egg. And now the main focus of my drawing is the duck. And so... I, w I want to put a lot more detail in the duck and not so much uh, into my elements that are surrounding the duck. So I'll keep this rather light as far as it, uh, detail and information. I'll curve these guys around. Just like this. Very simple. And then we'll add a bit of shading in there. Con considering that the light is coming from the top left, uh, the right bottom should be darkened in each one of these leaves. Same for this one here. This portion here will probably be darker, just like that. All right, that's coming along rather well. I think we should uh, not only have leaves here, but also one of the flowers that these things grow on a pond. So our duck is probably swim swimming around in a artificial pond or a real pond. No matter, we'll put a flower right here, right next to him. And these are just sort of like elongated water drops and or flames like you see this shape is sort of like a the 
flame on top of a candle. I'm, I'm sure you've drawn that before. Erase, erase, erase. If you don't have an electric eraser, which is quite normal, not everyone has one of these, uh, just use your regular eraser and take your time and erase that out of the way. Those lines that we don't need. Remember to always draw with a light line first and then press harder afterwards when you want to solidify those lines, when you're satisfied with them. Or use a marker and go over them with a marker. That's, that's cool too. And because my flower is not transparent, I need to erase that line there in the middle. All right, what's next? Let's add more detail to this leaf here that's closest to us. There we go, line down the middle and those radiating lines all the way around. Radiating. There we go, very simple. These are all very simple shapes, very simple lines. Little curves and lines and circles. Everyone should be able to draw this. Your mom, your dad, your sister. What you can do is, and what's a lot of fun actually, and I do it at home sometimes, is we all sit around one of my videos and we watch it and we draw the same thing all together. And you can do that at home if you'd like. You'd like to sit down with friends and family and watch one of my videos and draw what you see and then compare your drawings. Especially this duck isn't that difficult to do. And you can try it out. If you're finding you're having a hard time, which can happen, you just need more practice. Watch it over and over again. Practice makes perfect. Three P's of success, remember. Practice, patience, and perseverance. You need to be uh, patient with yourself. Don't try to rush things. Everything happens in time. You'll be able to succeed. I'm gonna put another flower over here to give that idea of depth. So the, the image has depth. It's farther back. So I'm gonna put a little flower in here, just like that. And a few more petals here at the top that we're gonna color in a few more lines like that. Maybe make the bottom petals a bit darker here to denote a shadow. Like that. And maybe we'll add a tree back here. Yeah, there could be a little, a few branches coming out of the water. This tree has been growing out of here somehow. And maybe we'll add a few pond lines, like those water lines coming away from the branch. Just like this. Just oval, oval shapes. Very, very simple. Let me clean this drawing up a little bit. Nice. All right. I guess what we could do now is color the water in. Put it a, uh, a few diagonal lines here. Now, because I'm right-handed, my diagonal lines are going from top right to bottom left. Um, and if you're left-handed, you'll be doing the opposite. It's just a natural way of drawing. And that's how they know how ancient artists, uh, or what hand the ancient artists drew in. Because my diagonal lines, it's hard for me to do lines in the other direction with my right hand. Uh, but for a lefty, it's a lot easier to do from top left to bottom right. And so if you're left-handed, don't try to do these lines in the same direction as I am. It'll be difficult. So I'm just looking for little spaces where I want to add a few more details, a few more strokes. And so this space is sort of empty and therefore I'm going to add a few more leaves, more lily pads. And add those re radiating lines. I think I'm going to color those in a little, a little bit to Put a bit more contrast in the drawing. It's a really rainy day here, so it's a lot of fun to be indoors, coloring this grass, sipping at some tea. You can have some hot cocoa if you like. Indoors, nice and cozy, perhaps with a friend. And drawing together, it's a lot of fun. It's a great activity. And you're using your imagination and your, your mind, your creativity, it's fantastic. All right. And I think we should see the reflection of the grass in the water here. So we're going to color in this little section here with a little bit of gray to represent that grass reflection. All the way across. Now careful not to go through the neck there or color on top of the beak here either. Just like this, all the way to the end. And maybe there's a little bit of darker water here. 
And of course, you know, the duck is sitting on the water here. So what we need to do is add the duck's shadow. You know, the duck has some shading onto the bottom of this side here. So I'm going to color that in. And maybe give it a second pass to make it a little bit darker um, later on. So put a few more lines here and there. I want a difference between the water and the sky, of course. So that's why the water is darker. So let's solidify that shadow, that duck's shadow here at the bottom. Which I'll probably erase later because I want, to, I want to make the duck's reflection appear in the water as well. So we'll try that out. By the way, if you guys want to join my fan club, I am now on Patreon. And that's patreon.com slash drawingwithpaolo. And you get to see advance notice of my videos. So, so you get to see videos before my YouTubers do. Um, and uh, you also get emails from me. And you can also join a Google Hangout. So the minimum to join Drawing with Paolo on Patreon is a dollar per publish. So for every video I publish, you can pay a dollar if you want to. If you don't want to, that's fine. You can just watch, continue watching YouTube. But if you want to interact with me and maybe even do a Google Hangout, well, you can join my Patreon page and have fun every other week or so with me on Patreon live. So I'm going to now try to make it look like this is the duck's reflection on the water here. So I think this should be erased there too. I don't know. It's not working exactly like I wanted to, but that's all right. I'll add a few more branches to this tree. A few more branches here and then a bit darker at the bottom and the reflection of the branches here in the water. And then we'll put a few little mountain lines back here. And uh, that's that, signature, and that's our duck for this wet day. All right. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this duck drawing. It was a pleasure for me to draw it for you. We'll see you next time on another episode of Drawing with Paolo. See you soon. Bye.